I am Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we are discussing our November book explosion book of the month, Magnus Chase and the Ship of the Dead by Rick Riordan. This month we've been working with Disney Hyperion. This was sent to me as part of a paid promotion. I am so excited to discuss it with you guys. If you don't know, this is the third and final book in the Magnus in the Gods of Asgard trilogy by Rick Riordan. I do think this is not the end for Magnus and crew. Like, this is not the end of these characters. But it is the end of this particular arc. I've really enjoyed this trilogy. As compared to like Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus, I'm not sure where I put it. I definitely like it better than Trials of Apollo because Apollo pisses me off. I love Magnus Chase though. He's fantastic. I love Alex Fierro and Samira and Blitzen and Hearthstone. We've got a great crew in Magnus Chase. And since this is the third book, it's really hard for me to describe what this is about for you guys. If you don't know already, then you should go watch my book talk for Magnus Chase and the Sword of Summer, the first one in this series. I'll Link that book talk below and the book talk to the second book in the series. There's a place, there's a time and a place to hear about what this series is about. Basically, it's Rick's Norse mythology series. Like Percy Jackson is the Greek mythology series. This is the Norse mythology series. That's all I'm gonna really say in this non-spoilery section. Like I'm gonna do another non-spoilery section to follow this section for people who have read books one and two in this series. So if you haven't read any Magnus Chase, please leave now. Read the books, come back, you can watch my book talks, we can talk about them together. And when you get to this one, We'll talk about this one. Goodbye, people who haven't read any Magnus Chase. Okay, so if you're here, you've read books one and two. I think I liked book one the best because there's the excitement of Valhalla and getting to learn about what it's like living there and meeting all our friends and stuff. This third book I think is my least favorite in the trilogy. And I think this is a pattern with Rick Riordan books for me. I don't really love his finales, which is such a bummer. But like The Blood of Olympus was the most disappointing Rick Riordan book for me. I, I guess the final Percy Jackson and the Olympians book didn't feel like a final one for me because I knew the heroes of Olympus had come after it. I guess that's all I have to go on. Now I've read The Ship of the Dead and I wasn't as in love with this book as I was with the previous two and it's because the first half of it went really slow for me. After that it picked up and I was running with it but before that I was like trudging through the mud. It just wasn't as great as the first two, which bumps me out. Obviously, you should still read it. You gotta find out what happens. Like, it's worth it just to be around these characters who I really, really love and I really, really want to see in more books. I really want to see Rick do a crossover series. I'm gonna give Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard a B plus. I'm gonna go into spoilery stuff now because I need to discuss spoilers. So if you haven't read the book yet, please leave. Goodbye non-spoilery people. Goodbye if you haven't read this book. Okay, Magnus Chase and the Ship of the Dead by Rick Riordan. Now, I feel like I just, I'm constantly setting myself up for disappointment with these books that don't center around Percy by like really, really hoping that Percy's gonna be a main character. And so I was really, really hoping that Percy was gonna be a main character. And I know this is just a ridiculous hope, but I was just hoping that he was gonna be part of the crew, part of the ship part of the crew of the big banana and he just wasn't. He was in the beginning training Magnus and Annabeth was there and it's just like not the same. He's just a cameo and he just keeps being cameos and I just want him to be not a cameo. I just want Percy the book forever. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, like, I love the new characters too, but when Percy's there, I, I love Percy. I want him to be the lead character of every story. Anyway, so <laughs> Magnus I'm trying to pinpoint why I didn't love this as much as the other ones. And I think it's because it felt like it didn't flow as much in the beginning. And I know crazy stuff happens in Rick's books all the time, but somehow it manages to feel cohesive. And in the beginning, like with Percy there and Percy leaving, and then we are on the big banana, and then we all of a sudden we get sucked into the sea giant's lair with his nine daughters. Like it just felt disjointed to me until Hearthstone and Blitz appeared and told us that we had to go face Hearthstone's dad again. And that's when things really started to pick up for me. That's when things started getting interesting and I felt emotionally connected. I felt the urgency. I was excited and scared for our characters again. It was real again. I don't I don't know why it wasn't before. I love that the ship is neon yellow. I loved all those jokes. I loved the first time when it was like everything about this ship is awesome except for the fact that it's the color of I can't believe it's not butter. 
water. I was shipping out like a magnet obviously this whole time. I'm so excited that things are rolling in that direction at the end. I love that Rick named Alex Alex. He asked permission to uh, name Magnus Magnus because of Magnus Bane from Cassie. <laughs> he just made it so that the Cassie ship is basically his ship, so you don't have to stretch anything. You have to just add an X instead of a C, and there, we got the ship from Magnus Chase. The second I met Alex, I was like, this is the ship, because Malix! I also really loved watching Sam go through Ramadan, seeing how she made what others might consider a weakness into a strength. Okay, I love the consistent, non-poetic, poetic jokes. The whole chapter where Magnus was waiting for the poetry juice to kick in, and he was like, we hurtled through the sky, like things that hurtle through the sky, and we fell, like stuff that falls. This is so real. This is so real when you're trying really hard to sound intelligent. The big thing we're leading up to in this book is Magnus challenging Loki to a flighting. I think at first we were all like, what the hell is a flighting? And apparently it's just a battle of the insults. It's a battle of the tongue. They just throw insults at each other until someone shrinks down small enough to be the loser. I was looking forward to it the whole time because it essentially sounds like a rap battle. Like it sounds like Loki and Magnus are gonna rap battle it out in the end. And honestly, I was really excited for that. I think this is another thing that kind of made the book feel not as great to me. And it started off and Loki was kind of throwing all these insults around and I was like, yeah, rap battle. I was reading them kind of like a rap in my head even though they didn't rhyme as much as I would like. And then Magnus just didn't rhyme at all. I was just like, this isn't a rap battle. You're just saying things. He could have rapped the positive stuff. I mean, even those positive stuff, I know like it was great and he was coming around to a kind of the Voldemort point. I have the support of my friends who love me and you will never have that because you're all alone. But I was like, Mm, this doesn't feel like a rap battle. Like, you're not even rhyming. It was like we went out of our way to get that special juice forever. And he just said things that he could have said on any normal day. Like, Magnus could have said any of those things on any normal day. We went so hard to get that mead. That Vassar Casser mead. What is it called? Cavassier's mead. We spent the whole book trying to get it. And then you just talked about how great your friends were. You didn't even rhyme! Did that, did that get to anybody else? Was that just me? Just found it anticlimactic. Another part that I really liked was when we confronted the thralls. With the Siths? With the Seeths. Siths? Skyths. The, with the Seeths that weren't sharp. And we had the stone and we knew this is what the stone had to be for. We, it just ended up being super dark. And it was really interesting to watch these characters in that sort of a situation and see Mallory have to deal with it. It was a very dark comedy. The way that they ended up tricking these giants into basically murdering each other. Because they could only murder each other, not the sharpest tools in the shed. Oh my god! Their tools are not the sharpest tools in the shed. Oh, I really enjoyed them knocking on the door. The princess from inside is like, did you try this yet? <laughs> Just helping them get the mead from inside. I love that Magnus has become basically Eliza Thornberry. I love when they were on the train and Mallory met her mother Freak and then they had to jump out the window. <laughs> and Magnus whilst he's like pummeling down a hill, here's Sam being like, grab my hand. And he's like, I have no idea why she wants to hold hands while we fall to our demise. He finally comes to a stop against a goat and he looks up and he's like, Otis? And because he can understand the goat, he hears him say like, no, I am Theodore, get off of me. I love this power and I feel like it could be really fun in another story in the future, but it was kind of just a side bit in The Ship of the Dead. Another one of my favorite chapters was Things Get Word. <laughs> this is the whole Hearthstone's dad part. Jack goes, your word. Magnus goes, you're weird. Your word. That was fun. Like honestly, I think that's my favorite part of the book, that that whole section. Another one of my favorite scenes was when they first arrived in Nephilim and they encountered the ice and then battling hypothermia together. They had to get off the ship in pairs and walk towards this fire that they saw in the mountains. And then Alex kisses him. It is so cute. And the book wraps up like all of our Brick series basically wrap up a meeting with all the gods. Like we get to see all the dads and moms and I felt like this kind of felt repetitive. Of course we're gonna have this conference with all the gods and everyone's gonna get to meet their mom and dad and it just didn't feel as emotional for me because I've seen it before twice. It wasn't the finale I wanted. 
The first two books were so different from Percy. And I feel like this one kind of followed a pattern that Rick likes to follow. And I know all his books have similarities, but it followed that same finale arc that I haven't been happy with in the past. But I'm hoping for more with these characters. They're so different. They expose you to such a diverse array of people that maybe you don't encounter in your day-to-day -day life. And I loved that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the series, your thoughts on the finale as a whole compared to his other finales. Please share in the comments. I'm Christine. I make videos every Tuesday. I'm at xteenmay on Twitter and Instagram where I share other stuff about my life. If you want to follow me there, all my links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye! Thank you.